Alright, so I'm going to show you how to manually install using the setup files off of the recovery partition. Basically what that does is give you a factory install. For that you'll need at least one thumb drive like this, 16 gigs or bigger. Um, if you have two, then that will possibly be a little bit easier. So, first things first. We will... I don't need to plug it in. I don't know how well you can see the screen. Probably not that well. What we will be doing is making a recovery drive onto the USB drive. So to do that, hit start and type in recovery. We won't be using the one key recovery because that relies on the utility partition being on the hard drive. What we're going to use is the built-in Windows 8 recovery method. So click on the create a recovery drive. Say yes, unless you've disabled user account control. Leave the chat box that says copy the recovery partition. Next, you'll discover your USB drive. Again, it needs to be 16 gigs. It's the default when it says there. Um, and then do create. It warns you it's going to wipe out the drive. That's fine. What this does is create a bootable recovery drive. The intent is that it will be able to recover straight off of the drive to your current drive. And while if you don't replace your drive, that will work. If your you know, original drive becomes unbootable, this will help you recover. However, if you replace a drive, your recovery partition's gone, and then this will not be so useful in, in that scenario. What we're going to be doing is just taking the setup files that it copies off of the USB, which are copied off the recovery partition. Once this is done, we'll have a sources folder. The sources folder creates or contains the SWM files, which are basically chunked versions of a WIM file, which is what all Windows, since Windows Vista, uses to install. Instead of doing a file at a time copy operation, a WIM file is basically a compressed archive that it more or less extracts as the installation which makes it go much faster. The unfortunate thing about this boot drive that it creates is it is unable to run ImageX. ImageX is the command line version of the Windows installation process that uses that WIM file. And what we will be doing is just taking those files and installing straight onto the hard drive from scratch. What that allows us to do is basically a clean install. If you have a cloning software that works like the one that came with my Samsung drive, then great. If you've just wanted to start over from scratch or you don't have a successful cloning method available to you, this is probably your next best bet. I'll go ahead and let this fast forward until it's done and we'll pick up from there. Alright, so it looks like it's finally finished. Now at this point, if you have two USB thumb drives that you're going to use, you're good to go. If you've already made your boot drive with uh, ImageX on it, then at this point you'll just need to skip ahead to the steps where we alter the uh, boot method from UEFI to legacy mode. However, if you only have one 
that you need to use. What you'll do is go into the drive that you just created and copy this sources folder. This is the only one that we'll need. Just copy it. You can do the C or the D drive, it doesn't matter. And you'll save that for later. Once you have your new bootable drive, you'll copy the sources folder back onto the bootable USB drive. At this point, we will shut it down. Like I said before, I have a bootable drive already that I use. It has various utilities and stuff on it that I use for work. I'll be using that as my bootable drive and then I'll be using the recovery drive as well. So once you're ready to boot off your utility or bootable PE environment drive that can run ImageX, what you'll need to do is press the little one key recovery button. And go into BIOS setup. Under You'll maybe need to disable secure boot if it's an option. If you've already put the new drive in, it should be grayed out. And then under boot, you'll need to change it from UEFI to legacy support. You can leave it at UEFI first if you'd like. Uh, however, what we'll need to do is make sure you hit function and F2, well, basically, that will be hitting F2 uh, to get back into the BIOS if you need, but we'll be needing to hit function on F12 to get the boot screen. Hopefully I'll catch it in time. May I may have to control delete. But once we've changed it again, legacy support is all we're looking for here. Exit, save the changes. You'll notice without legacy boot support, the uh, F2 little prompt and F12 don't show up in the bottom left hand corner. Without enabling legacy support you'll be able to see uh, the boot options menu by hitting the one key, re uh, one key recovery button. However you won't be able to boot off a traditionally created Windows PE drive. You probably can boot off as it's listed here the recovery drive. However, as I mentioned earlier, you can't run ImageX, so that doesn't do us a whole lot of good. So my SanDisk Cruiser is my utility drive. I'll be booting up with that. So first things first, we want to run disk part. This is the Windows partition editing application. We'll do list disk. That will show us the bootable USB drives we used as well as the internal storage device. Disk zero should be your SATA drive, but just compare the size, make sure that's correct. So we'll select so that disk, do SEL DISK zero for disk zero. Now we've got that selected. This one is used, I've already used it, so I'm going to do a clean. What that does is basically restore it to the out of the box situation for the drive. It removes all the partitions and, and basically makes it a blank slate. At that point, what we'll do is create partition primary. Helps if I spelled partition right. So now what we've done is created the OS volume partition on the new drive. 
we'll do select or SEL part for partition and one because that will be the only one on there we do assign that gives it a drive letter and we will do active what that does is makes it bootable list vol that will show us the drive letters for the different associated drives that are available you can see the F drive is the new partition that was just created the little asterisk by it means that it's bootable or active or selected in this case you can for format the partition inside of disk part um, we I just use the good old command line version that way you don't have to call out the file system what we'll be doing is exiting now we're done with our disk part operations we'll do format F I do slash Q for a quick format yes you can enter a label if you want the default Windows C drive label inside the Lenovo was Windows underscore OS so I'll do that at this point and I'll have noted it already in the video but you'll want to copy imagex the executable inside the sources file it just makes running the command line stuff a little more easy so what we'll do now is get to that so the recovery drive is the E drive in my case make sure you note what it says up above the label will be recovery that's the one you're looking for we'll go CD sources Now we can see that ImageX is installed, it's there at the bottom, and then the install.swm files are there listed. You should have five in total. And the command to install Windows to that newly created partition will be ImageX forward slash ref. sources you shouldn't need to do the full path but I like to do that just to eliminate the possibility of complications and what we're doing there is basically telling ImageX that it will be referencing all of the SWM files in this path then we're telling it to apply so forward slash apply the same path and install dot SWM then we'll do one one is the index the SWM and WIM files are archives that are capable of containing multiple images we're telling it to use the first one by default there's usually only one and then the destination in our case it was the F drive to enter it'll show the applying in progress doing this install to a solid state drive from a fast external USB 3 drive would be considerably quicker than this so 15 minutes is probably the long side I don't remember how long it took last night when I was testing but it, it went surprisingly quick so once that's complete looks like it took 13 minutes we just need to remove the thumb drives and power down the system It is a little sluggish because I am just using this for instructional purposes so I'm reusing an older hard drive that's even slower than the one that comes with it from the factory. Alright so here's the out of the box experience. Same as when you first get it. The 
This just kind of highlights how painfully slow some of the older laptop hard drives really are. So I'm just going to stick with the default. Alright, so the last step will be to change that BIOS setting. I'm going to use the one key recovery button because that always loads the menu. That way I don't have to try and catch it. Go to the BIOS setup. Now you'll see under boot, by default, it's telling it to boot the Realtek piece, uh, Pixie Boot. So we are going to move this down the list by doing F5. So now it's default boot. First attempt will be the internal hard drive. So no more little white stuff. With UEFI, you get the Lenovo screen while it loads Windows with the legacy boot, you get a little Windows icon. There, theoretically, it will be faster to boot with UEFI, so that's one kind of a bummer. But realistically, that wasn't bad. I mean, this is a even slower hard drive than the one that comes with it, and you just saw how quickly it, it was able to boot. You end up with all the same software already installed. You've got all your drivers so the touch works. If it's not laggy. Um, you know, the camera works, all your sound works. The little hotkeys that do the various tasks work. 